Peter. Thanks, Cam. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Dr. Sneed. Um, see you next week. Migs and Swig. Bye. You're listening to Migs and Swig on 102.5 The Bone. The Bone. WHPT Sarasota, Tampa, St. Pete. And now on 97.1 WSUN HD2. Holiday Tampa, St. Pete. Live from the Weathertight Windows Studio. Real Raw Radio is the best. Wait, is that it? There's nothing else written here. It's just, just the best. The best what? All right. 102.5 The Bone. We're the best. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Hey, this is Vinny Knudhaus from Marlboro Street, Little Italy, New York. Are you listening to the, my, the Michael Radio Show on 102.5 The Bone? Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, me what? I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. I just want to... It's time for the Mike oh, Radio Show on 102.5 The Bone. What's going on? This is the Mike O Radio Show, but it's Ryan Hoppy as the host. Mike O gave me the keys. No, not to his Audi, but to the show from 2 to 4 p.m. But first, let's let the beat drop. Like 727-579-1025 and 1-800-771-1025. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Go to theboneonline.com and get involved with the chat room. I probably won't read it, but I appreciate all the comments. But like I said, here is that beat drop. Uh, I'm assuming it's a very sunny day out. I've been here at the Bone since 4. I essentially don't see the sun. I come in here at 4 and I leave at 4. Like, I'm not complaining. I love every second of working in radio, but I do not see the sun on the weekend. It's like it does not exist. Okay, currently... If you're looking for plans this weekend, I have the perfect solution for you. Day two of 97X's next big thing is going on tonight. And I got the inside scoop. Danielle from Promotions, who you heard crush Jacob two times two weeks ago, she said there's some tickets left, but at the box office. So if you want to go, it's at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater. I think I said that right. And that is at 4802 US 301. 813-740-2446. It's 813-740-2446. Go tonight, man. I mean, the promotions team is working their ass off. Everybody in this building is working their ass off. But my goodness, Mike Olivero, Danielle, Corey Cardinal, it makes me want to work harder seeing how hard they work for this building. So also, you can tweet at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Mike Oliveira, two eyes around the V, as he likes to say. You can also tweet at the Corey Cardinal. Oh, Denise, Denise. I'm just making sure that even though I'm sitting in on this show, I'm just making sure that everybody gets their plugs. So, Coming up at 210, he is a movie director that I have known for nine years. His name is David Seth Cohen, and he is the director of Finding Sandler. I think when I say the movie is called Finding Sandler, you can kind of figure out who it's about. But we'll hear more about that in a few minutes. And then at 2.35, this guest man is quite possibly, and I've worked with a lot of people. Nobody here is a douchebag. But I've worked with some sociopathic douchebags. And I've worked with some of the classiest people. And when I tell you, that Al Keck is one of the greatest gentlemen I've ever worked with. His show is every Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. 
and he will be coming on. Because Mike Go said to me, he goes, well, I'm letting you do the show, but I need you to have Mike Go elements. And I said, okay, because I watch sports, but I'm not an X's and O's guy. I don't know if you're aware of this. But I didn't play sports growing up. There was one volleyball team I made freshman year, and we were up like 9 nothing. And when I got in, I was like the uh, OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. of the team. We won like 11-7. to Like, we barely won. I've never played sports. Never been good at it. Although there was one time, like in 2008, I made a bet with this kid that was such a douchebag that was so mean to me. I said, if I make this half-court shot, will you leave me alone? And he said, yes. And I made it, and he never left me alone. 727-579-1025 and 1-800-771-1025. But Al Keck is going to be here to break down the sports because, oh, heaven forbid I do that. I am not an X's and O's guy. So, as you guys know, you hear me all the time on the radio. All the time. And you're probably wondering what the hell I do. Well, I live with my girlfriend in St. Pete with these two cats. I have the one cat named Luna, who quite possibly is the most precious being ever. She is a complete angel. I bought her. I know they say adopt, don't shop, but accidentally, before hearing that hashtag that is widely used, I purchased her. And my scathing Google review, they are no longer allowed to sell cats. And basically what happened was four years ago, I adopted her and she was dying. So then... My mom helped pay for it, I'm just being honest, and then she lived. Well, last year, Luna almost died, and I had to create a GoFundMe. And shout out to the Bone Fam, the best listener base in all of radio. They contributed $2,000 for my cat. So that's that one cat, Luna, who is my precious angel. I love that thing. Like, someday, I kind of want to have a daughter and son. I don't know, because I like sleeping until 11, and I think I'll get 11 hours of sleep in probably one week. But let me tell you. This other cat I have, Hoagie Jones. We quite possibly might have the weirdest relationship ever. It has nothing to do with the fact that he attacks me and my girlfriend all the time. Eh, he, it kind of is like that. So we got Hoagie from a clinic that was adopting cats. And my girlfriend was kind of going through a crisis. She was like, oh my God, blah, 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 I want to get a cat today. And she saw this cat. And this cat was at the place like four months prior and got adopted and then brought back. So then she's like, it's my mission to bring this cat alive. Or not alive, but to bring it home. And ever since day one, I've gotten average vibes from Hoagie Jones. Like, Hoagie Jones loves me, but I'm like the boyfriend that's going to probably marry his mother. Well, I am. But we're not the closest. And he likes to attack because he has two litters. The cat is a year and a half old, and he's had more sex than me. That cat has created two litters, and even though he's uh, spayed, I believe the word is, and he's not uh, neutered, I think, I don't know. Uh, basically, he's not able to have cats anymore, but he has the biggest crush on my cat, Luna, and will jump at the opportunity to like go near her, so we have to keep them separate. So last night, I'm getting ready for my show. My cat attacks me because I pet Luna for like 20 minutes, and I think I smelled like her, and it was very weird. I would not bring him to Eyes Wide Shut. So last night was absolutely chaotic. I was very mad at Hoagie. I was like bleeding in that. And then he gives you that little cute cat eye. It's like, aw, I'm sorry I'm a sociopath. I don't mean to do it. I don't mean to attack you guys over and over. And then by the next day, I'm getting cat treats, and everyone's bowing down to me. But my goodness. All right, on the phone line right now is a guy that I have known for nine years now, which I cannot believe is nine years. So I did radio at Harper College, and I was not good, 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 good. I couldn't get a word out. And I had a co-host named Neil Dwyer who lived in New York, and we did, I did a few variations. I did the Hoppy Show, Hoppy and Sack, because my co-host last name was Mosack. And then I did Chi-Town and the Big Apple. So I'm from Chicago, and he was from New York. And we did a show, and somehow Neil knew this guy. But he is the movie director for Finding Sandler, this project that I have found fascinating throughout my whole life. So on the phone line right now, on Hoppy Hour, filling in for the Mike O Radio Show, on 102.5 The Bone is... 
Director David Seth Cohen of Finding Sandler. What's going on, David? Ryan, what's going on, man? It's funny, I'm listening to you, and I remember how you were, you know, stuttering and everything, and you really uh, come a long way on the radio. It's really impressive, man. Thank you. It was literally a decade of working on it, and also, the game changer wasn't speech class or whatever. It was taking Clonopin for my ADHD. Once I relaxed, it was game over, bro. Well, listen, man, whatever you did, you did a really good thing, and, you know, you've improved on your, your speaking and everything, and it's, it's, like, incredible to listen to you now compared to when we first had our conversation. That means a lot, bro, but I, I have so much time with you because you're a busy guy, so even though I love everybody kissing my ass, I don't want to spend the whole time doing that. So, David, you fascinate me. So explain to the audience, I know what happened, but explain to the audience... You're making a movie. Has it come out yet? Finding Sandler. I find this fascinating because you've been working so hard on it. So to all of Tampa Bay and Fort Myers and almost to Orlando, tell everybody about this movie you've been working on, Finding Sandler. So uh, I started on Finding Sandler way back in 2006, and I've uh, been doing it ever since. Um, the, the quick synopsis of the movie is when I was uh, 1998, I had just graduated college and I was working on the movie Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. And my boss, who was the costume designer, instructed me to go deliver clothing to Adam. I also had to drive this woman home who was a, another PA in my department. And then I was told just to drop the car off and go home. And, you know, what seemed like a meaningless task to me at that moment ended up turning into like this crazy life-changing event in my life. I, I went to Sandler's building, I double parked the car, uh, this, this PA was waiting in the car, I told her I'd be right back. I ran into the into the building, now this is in the middle of Manhattan, I'm double parked. And back then, Ryan, I was a poor 22-year-old, you know, from college grad. Me too. No cell phone, uh, yeah, you know how I feel. I had no cell phone, nothing. So um, I go, into the, the building as directed. I hand the clothes to the doorman as directed, and the doorman goes, hey, just bring them up to Adam. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I, I went up to Adam's floor. I, I knocked on the door to his apartment, and from behind the door, all of a sudden I hear, who is it? What do you want? He was yelling. It was like I knew it was Adam Sandler at that point because he yelled at me like he yells in his movies. And I was like, oh, it's Dave. I'm just a PA here to deliver your clothes for the premiere. And he opens the door, and he's got this huge smile on his face, and he goes, hey, man, you want to come in and hang out and have a drink? And I kind of froze at that moment because, you know, my boss had given me those things to do. I had, I had the, the woman waiting in the car. I had no way of contacting her. Uh, I didn't want to get fired from my job, and I basically froze. I, I said, look, I can't stay. I, 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 no, I can't. And I left, and I never had that chance to hang out with Adam again. And now, you know, Adam was always a hero of mine growing up. I mean, I, you know, Growing up as a Jewish kid, there were never any Hanukkah songs on the radio when you were a kid. So when he came out with that, it was like, it made you kind of feel cool to be Jewish. You know, we finally have one, and it's really cool, you know. So, um, you know, I, I kind of really regretted not getting the chance to stay and hang out and just, you know, talk to Adam. You know, I kind of equate it like somebody that's, um, you know, huge into uh, technology and you know, uh, Steve Jobs, when he was alive, saying, hey, you want to come in and hang out and have a drink? And then saying, no. To me, that was like my opportunity to, you know, learn uh, or, you know, get advice or whatever it may be from a hero of mine. And it's something that, you know, I always was just like, what if, you know? And um, so fast forward to 2006, I'm a producer at a Catholic TV station on Long Island in New York. Um, and, uh, just not really where I thought I would be in my life. I was, I was, I had a girlfriend at the time with two dogs and I was living in my grandmother's basement apartment. Just, just wasn't where I thought I would be at age 30. And one night I had this dream that I went to California looking for Adam Sandler. And in my dream, I would run into people from the set of Big Daddy and nobody would help me find them. I kept asking, Hey, can you help me find Adam Sandler? And somehow I ended up in my vision of his production company, and I'm sitting in his lunchroom, and I'm talking to somebody directly across from me, and then Sandler's diagonal and starts talking to me. We start walking and talking, and I woke up. And when I 
woke up, I felt like it was just this, you know, uh, like a revelation almost that I had to do something about this whole thing or I'd just go on regretting it for the rest of my life. And um, I called my business partner at the time and I said, hey, man, listen, I just had this dream. I want to make a movie. It's going to be called Finding Sandler. And I want to go on a quest to find Adam and have that drink that I had option back in 1998. And his response wasn't like, oh, great idea, man. It was like, hey, it's like 6 in the morning. Can I go back to bed and we'll talk about this later? But uh, he ended up uh, agreeing, and, and he was the first person to jump on and help. And then it just kind of went from there. So I've read some mean comments. Like, there was, like, this radio show that put up a post about it. Because mostly people are rooting for you. I'm rooting for you because I've known you for nine years. You're a good friend. You're a very genuine guy. But there were some people that were saying that you were being kind of obsessive, like, move on already. So to some of the, like, douchebags online, because trust me, I get a decent amount of hate. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So I'm used to it. But for you... What do you say to the people that might not agree with your movie? I mean, listen, I don't blame anybody for not agreeing with anything because it's, it's human nature to not agree with people all the time. You know, people people that believe in what I'm doing and, and think it's cool, great. You know, they're fans. But there's nothing wrong with haters, too. You know, you have haters. There's a, there's a great quote from uh, Pitbull, and he says, if you have haters, you're doing something right because people are talking about it. So you know what, man? God bless the haters. Let them hate. Let them hate all they want. I know who I am. Um, I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm doing it. Um, it's been a long journey. You know, my, my, my quest isn't necessarily about Adam Sandler. It's about accomplishing the goal that I've wanted to accomplish, and that is actually finishing a film and making a movie. And Adam Sandler was the inspiration for me to do that. Um, so, you know, let people say whatever they want, you know, that's totally fine. And, um, you know, I'm happy with what I did and I, I don't regret making the movie. So I got some uh, info from my uh, producer about you and my producer being me going on imdb.com. It says here that at age 10, you began making films and performing live shows. Now, I'm not trying to make this about me, but I feel very similar to you where I wanted to go into radio since a young age of growing up in Chicago and the way they covered 9-11 because I didn't have TV. So isn't it kind of cool to think that like since we were young, we had these dreams, maybe people people believed in you or didn't but like there's something really magical about having one goal and no backup plan i don't know if you have a backup plan but i don't you know i don't it's funny um i mean look i do all sorts of video production and photography for um you know to supplement you know these films that i do as well uh, but it's in the same realm of of you know filming uh it's just filmmaking for corporations and stuff like that um, but I do have a couple other films that are kind of in the work. And so, you know, I'm hoping that uh, when Finding Sandler gets out there and, and people see it, you know, um, next week, um, and, and that'll be, that'll be uh, the icing on the cake. So one of our hosts here, Maurice Javon, a very talented radio guy, very talented author and director. He made WDED, which is based off of like radio. It's a zombie movie. It's a very great movie that they made. And he was saying it's hard to like get the movies onto like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon. Like it's a grind to get on those services. Have you been in communication? Have you been talking to any of these services? And if so, how hard is it to get their approval? That's a great question, Ryan. Um, I haven't been talking to them yet. Uh, the business has just been completed. We started submitting it to festivals. Um, the first step for us, because it's such an independent film, um, is trying to go the festival route where, you know, when it gets into a festival and people see it, start talking about it, you know, at that point, we're hoping that it'll open up a conversation with, you know, a Netflix, an Amazon, a Hulu, an HBO Max, or whatever, you know, popular streaming uh, service is out there. Um, but, uh, no, we haven't been talked to them yet. And, yes, it is, you know, from what I hear as well, it's not very easy. To, you know, most of those services are looking for, you know, films with a big budget um, that have major celebrities attached to them um, and, you know, that kind of that kind of project. 
you know, Finding Sandler is a very low budget, independent film. And I mean, like, fully independent, man. Um, you know, uh, not a lot of people working on it, like a big budget feature that a studio makes. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, at the very least, uh, we will self distribute the film at some point. But the plan is to find distribution, you know, once we get into a festival and, and start, you know, screening it where people can see it. So, I'm guessing because you're a very outgoing guy that when you're on set, you're very talkative, you command the room. Now, for me, I'm very outgoing on air. I don't hold back. But in person or at bars, I'm more of an introvert. So how similar is David Seth Cohen in work mode to David Seth Cohen at home with his girl? Are you the same person or do you find a need to like turn off work mode? Um, I mean, you know, my regular day, I, I always, I'm always kind of thinking about work, you know, I actually love what I do. And I think that that's actually what I, I think is, is huge for me because there are a lot of people that are stuck in their everyday life, their everyday job, and they're just not happy with what they do. So they don't want to talk about it later on. But for me, I, you know, I love what I do. So I don't mind like talking about it any, any day of the week or anywhere. Um, but as far as, like, you know, how I am when I go out, uh, just the bars and stuff like that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm outgoing, but I like to hang with a small crowd and, you know, the people that I know and trust and love. Um, but, Ryan, you stand out, man, because you're super tall. Damn right. <laughs> yes, I'm very tall. I'm six foot nine, but six, eight and a half. But when I was on the uh, dating apps, it's more fun to say six, nine, even though it's low brow. Hey, listen, 6'9 is, is nice and tall, man. I wish I could borrow, like, five inches from your height. If you had five inches, what would be the difference in your life? Like, I'm willing to give it to you. I'm willing to be 6'4 and not notice as well. What would you do with the five more inches? Well, I, I would certainly get rained on a lot quicker than I do now. You know, the rain would hit me a lot earlier. Um, and I would be able to see over people at a bar instead of having to, you know, cram through them. Uh, so I'd probably just use the viewing, the viewing angle to my advantage in some capacity. Uh, this is going to be the greatest transition in radio. So for the viewing angle, where can people find your work and what's going on with Finding Sandler? How can they follow it on social media and whatnot? That was a great transition, Ryan. Thank you. Um, we, have, uh, in, we have an Instagram, uh, Finding Sandler. Uh, it's you know, at Finding Sandler. Same thing with Facebook, you know, Finding Sandler on Facebook. Um, if they just Google Finding Sandler, a uh, ton of stuff will come up. You know, there's the, the, mo the new movie trailer. You know, you just Google Finding Sandler uh, 2022 trailer, and, and that'll come up. Um, and then I'm, I've been doing a lot of TikToks, Ryan. I started getting into that. I saw that. It's actually really fun. Yeah, it's really fun. And I've been doing a bunch for the movie using a couple little you know, clips from the film and stuff like that. So, so people could hop on my TikTok, which is real David Seth Cohen, and uh, and they can find a couple, uh, you know, TikTok in regards to the film there as well. So, uh, and then that's, you know, we also have a website, FindingTaylor.com, uh, which definitely needs to be updated. Um, and then of course my own personal website is DavidSethCohen.com. So people can go there. You know, they could go to the contact page, shoot me an email if they have any questions. Pretty much. Well, David, it's been a lot of fun having you on the show. It's crazy. We went from talking to a parking lot and a cemetery across the block from Harper College. That's what the range was. We literally talked to dead people and kids that didn't want to go to community college when we were on 88.3 FM. And now we're talking to all of Tampa Bay in my debut show. So this is a surreal moment. You've been a good friend, and keep up the good work. And if you ever need any promotion, man, let me know. I'll promote you on my account. Thanks, Ryan. And look, I really appreciate this. And on top, of course, it breaks up right when he's complimenting me. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate being on the show. I'm grateful to you for having me, and I hope that you know you'll always remember this first episode. I will. I'll never forget it. David Seth Cohen of Finding Sandler. Thank you for coming on Hoppy Hour, filling in for the Michael Radio Show on 1025 The Bone. It's been a blast. 
You got it, Ryan. Take care. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, bro. Man, it's a crazy moment. Like, you ever, I don't know, like, maybe you see your kids grow up or whatever. I don't know. And you see your life flash before your eyes. When I tell you that my audience in Arlington Heights, Illinois, was a cemetery and a parking garage, yeah, it's, uh, times are different. You're listening to the Mike Owen Radio Show on 102.5 The Boat.